Thank you. And now it is a great uh, honor for me to introduce Mr. Lian Mong Song, uh, Minister of Federal Union Affairs, to deliver the keynote address on behalf of the Prime Minister. Uh, over to you, Mr. Lian. Thank you so very much for your introduction. And thank you so very much for inviting us as the national unity government in this very, very important occasion. And we are also most welcome and appreciate that you have been dealing with for our country and working for our country and then the freedom for our country. Since I'm going to deliver uh, the speech of our Prime Minister Man Win Kanta, and the speech is prepared in Burmese. So I'm going to deliver the speech in Burmese. And later on, I will also be on the panelist. So I will discuss that time in English again. Along Mingalaba, Lisa Pado, a PP Sanya, Lotagma, Tamekabia, Twitchow, IT, UC, Ma, a Twitu, Tunyimu. A PP Sanya, so low in at Tilonga, Lutama, Tamekambia, Puichoma, Tui, Tuyimu. Honorable guest, General Secretary of the ITUC, General Secretary of the BWI, General Secretary from GUC, sorry, GUFS. Parliamentarian from ASEAN region, representative from employer organization from ASEAN region, representative from the trade unions from ASEAN region, representative of the NUG, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and as well as representative from the Myanmar Labour Alliance. I would like to welcome all of you and I would like to greet to all of you for your participation in this important occasion. It is a privilege and an honor to address you today at this important international event, as I mentioned. Particularly, I also want to pay tribute to the ILO constituents, unions, governments, and employers for standing up and supporting our people, our workers, in the fight against the violence of a military dictatorship. And in support of democracy and social justice, we also want to thank all those members of parliaments in Asia and around the world who are supporting our struggle for freedom, democracy, and social justice. In particular, we command the 109 International Labour Conference for adopting the resolution for a return to democracy and respect for fundamental rights in Myanmar and refusing the application from the military-backed State Administration Council to be credentialed as representatives of Myanmar. This was a right decision as the NUG is the legitimate representative of the people of Myanmar. We represent the elected parliamentary members of the National League for Democracy and representative from several ethnic states and members of civil society. Only three months since formation, we as the, as the democratic government of the Myanmar people have already taken important actions to counteract the violent military coup and build a better country. Our ministries supported our public sector workers, particularly health workers, teachers, and wide range of 
workers dismissed for opposing the violent regime. From June 2021, we set up the interim advanced education and home-based education programs and special emergency program to face the rampant COVID-19 pandemic made worse by attacks on health workers and the health system. Most importantly, we are involving the representatives of all the ethnic armed organizations of CSOs trade unions, women and youth organizations in drafting a new democratic federal constitution. This constitution will grant equitable power and resources sharing among our states with all ministries, including defense and security under the control of a civilian government. We, co we are committed to erase authoritarian laws that degrade human and labor rights. Our government is committed to repealing the 1982 citizenship law to provide full rights to all nationalities of Myanmar, especially the unprotected minorities, including the Rohingyas. On 1st of July this year, our government launched a declaration in accordance with Article 12, sub-article 3 of the Statute of the International Criminal Court to ensure continuity of representations before the court. Our declaration grants the International Criminal Court jurisdiction over crimes committed within Myanmar that fall within the Rome Statute against all communities, including Rohingyas throughout our history. For Myanmar workers and trade unionists who have paid all incredible price for decades, including suffering extrajudicial killings, then confiscation, forced labor, a lack of labor rights, forced recruitment of children into the army and perpetual ethnic conflicts. Under an NUG government, workers will be empowered by allowing them to freely exercise their rights to form and join unions of their own choosing an effective bargaining based on national labor law aligns with the ILO core conventions and jurisprudence. Tripartite mechanisms will be encouraged to develop new sectoral national agreements and decent work. These all will be the ultimate solution for all the conflicts and disputes that could be common as a solution for the industrial relation, which will be the new solutions, the new mechanism in our country. In the spirit of the ILO resolution on Myanmar, we are calling on the ILO tripartite constituents, particularly governments, to support our request for the NUG to be awarded credentials as the country representative at the coming UN General Assembly. The military junta, who now pretend to be a caretaker government, are seeking recognition at the General Assembly, has no right to be recognized as a government. They do not represent the will of a people, and nor are the acting of the good of a people. In the past six months, they have erased important gains achieved during our last parliamentary term. To give you a particular example, in July, as the World Bank, information and statistics 
that reveal the coup and the COVID-19 pandemic will cause a 30% fall in GDP in 2021. The UNDP declared that soon 25 million people among half of the 54 million inhabitants will be in absolute poverty. The ILO calculated that at least 2.2 million full-time workers have already lost their jobs since the coup. The national unity government fulfills all the UN criteria to be accredited as the legitimate Myanmar government. Kiyen, Mun, Kachin, Chin, etc. are the area that has not been managed to put under the current regime, but it does buy energy as the energy control part of the national territory. Energy respects the UN Charter, while SAC repeatedly contravene the Charter and related UN obligation. NUG has the support of the people of Myanmar, while SAC does not. The Honda is not a government, neither de jure nor de facto. The Honda is not governing Myanmar, but merely terrorizing the Myanmar people. We need your urgent support which is the only way to reach peace and stability in Myanmar and in the ASEAN region. It is to be enable our government to be recognized internationally. The ASEAN principles of non-interference and consensus termed the constructive engagement blocked progress and legitimized military dictatorship in Myanmar for 20 years, which we all are well remembered. Once again, the ASEAN five-point consensus is being used as a shield for the regime. The people of Myanmar do not want a regime for another 20 years and feel let down by ASEAN and its engagement with the regime. ASEAN claim to respect human rights and the rule of law cannot be legitimate if continued to engage with the military junta. In conclusion, please support us in order to call and in order to have this regime got rid of Myanmar once and for all. Thank you.